Well, good morning. Good morning. Anybody come ready to worship God this morning? Amen. Well, if you would and you're able, would you please stand, take a moment, turn to those that are around you, greet them, thank them for being here this morning. way back to your seat. Again, I want to thank you for being here with us to worship this Sunday before Thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love this time of year. Love the focus, about having an attitude, gratitude. So we want to thank you for being here with us and those that are watching us online. want to thank you for connecting with us this morning. I have a scripture I'd like to share with you that I think it's appropriate for this time of year and the season that we're in. It's in Psalms 100, verse 4. It says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. The question I have this morning, is there anyone that entered the gates of this church this morning with a heart full of thanksgiving? Are we not thankful, thankful for what he's done in our lives? Is he not worthy of our praise this morning? And I absolutely love this season, like I said. This was started by people of faith. And today it's carried on by people of faith. And this is an attitude that we shouldn't just have through November and, and December. It's something that his people should carry on all year long. We should be thankful for what he's done in our lives. So like I said this morning, we can stop just at salvation. It's just enough right there that he loved us enough that he would save us. But see, he didn't stop there. He moves on our lives. He puts our lives back together. He puts people in our lives. Would you turn to somebody, tell them this morning that they're important to you, that they're a gift from God. Amen. See, God loves us so much. There's not an area in our life that he's overlooked. He's made provision for every area of our life, and He's put people in our lives at different seasons in our lives to help us get through this walk. Tonight, I'm thankful that we have a church that's come ready and on fire to worship Him this morning. Amen. So let's close our eyes. Let's lift our hands in this place, and let's welcome Him in this morning. Father, we love you. We've come hungry for you this morning, Father. Lord, we're so thankful. Lord, thankful, Lord, that you would love us, Lord, that you would seek us out and that you would move on our lives, that you would put our marriages back together, that you would save our children, that you would lift us up and that you would fill us and that you would choose to use us today, Lord, to represent you in the world. Lord, we've come today to give you honor, to give you praise, Lord, in this house, Lord. Receive our praise this morning as we open our hearts and pour it out to you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we've come to praise you. And the church says, amen and amen. Let's praise him this morning.
of right now. He has promised. <laughs> it's not a suggestion. It's a promise. <laughs> he has promised. <laughs> when we pray, we're getting ready to do that right now. If you need your healing, you need to come right now. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh.
I have Hallelujah. already <laughs> come to His grace that brought me safe thus far and His grace stop right there let me ask you a question do you believe what you're singing this morning sometimes we've got to get our mind let, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus now we got to get it in our mind today that anything is possible in the presence of God when the body of believers has come together in his house then anything can take place if you didn't come forward or or you still have a need back there or you're just wanting to believe in this moment right now that the blood of jesus christ the 39 stripes that was taken upon his back that you believe god can heal in this house 
this church house today if you believe that lift up your hand if you want to see the miraculous power of God work right now in your midst then I want you to lift up the other hand right now and begin to call on the healer to call on the deliverer as we sing this song one more time take off there is power power wonder working power in the blood oh Power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power. You're almost there. Somebody's getting healed right now. Somebody's getting touched right now. Glory to God. I say it a lot, but it's an it's a admonition from Scripture. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Now, I only want the ones who are triumphant this morning. Won't you give out a shout right now? Give out a shout right now. Amen. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, there's a wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. One more time, give me praise. many religious things we'll say well, what time does church start that's so funny that's hilarious what time does church start well, what time does church end <laughs> honey we don't go to church we are the church we are the church and you know what Jamie it don't ever end there ain't a start time and there ain't a finish time. I'm in this thing all in. I'm in this thing in the morning, in the noon time, in the evening. When I lay my head on my pillow at night, I just say in Jesus' name, amen. Because all day long, I have been the church. Well, ain't nobody gonna help me this morning. Ain't nobody here to have church. No, no, no presence of God is here Amen. power of God can do anything mm, he can. I'm not trying to sell you swamp land in Florida I'm telling you God can do anything and if someone will break through if someone will get that mentality of faith and they'll actually believe God for the impossible everything you see right here everything you feel and you're touching right now all of it was created by something God created in the beginning when there was nothing. I'm walking by faith right now. I'm living by faith. I'm 
moving in faith. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so glad you're here. I've been looking for you. You must have had to go on vacation. I want you to know the power of God is working in your life on your behalf. You've been through it, but you're coming out. And when you come out on the other side of it, God's got a testimony for you in the name of Jesus. You have yet to see what he's going to do. There's going to be so much from this, you're going to have to write it down. One testimony after another is coming. In every prayer of need, in every request you've had, God says, I'm going to show you what every My purpose God was in allowing you to go through it. But when you come anything, out, keep record of it because it's going to be so much. In anything, Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Anything. My God, He can do anything. What did He do? He made the earth with all its fullness and all. question was asked is there anything too hard for God no 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 nothing is too hard for God father we come to you now we thank you we're gathered together the believers are here wherever two or three are gathered together in your name you show up you're here with us we honor the Holy Spirit that's here today God, we're believing that we have come together in the presence of God. Our praise promises that you will set up your throne. You will inhabit the praises of your people. So, Lord, as we're praising, as we're praying, as we're worshiping together in unity, and as we've come together in your name, we're believing for signs and wonders and miracles to take place in this house. And we believe and we thank you for it because it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Mm. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For oh, he made this earth. Oh, it's fullness and all the time shall bring oh, my God you gotta trust it can do anything praise God praise God praise the Lord well before you're seated I want you to turn to someone and Look at him, real smile in the, on your face and say, the church has left the building today. The church is leaving the building today. The church, not yet. Don't leave yet. <laughs> Ushers guard the doors. Not allowed to leave yet. God bless you. You may be seated. Sarah, stand up. You and John. John, stand up with her. I'm so thankful for these two folks. They gave to us the most amazing respite through the roof ministry this last Friday night to special needs children. And I'm learning, I'm learning, Sarah. Because anytime you say thank you, Sarah, she says, oh, no, 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 it's all of them too. All of the volunteers, all of the folks who were here Friday night, what an amazing encounter and time we had. And I'm so thankful for each one of you that volunteered and gave of your time. Sarah, thank you. And John, it was birthed in your heart. To, first, I, I wrote the other day that it, it first started in a hurt within you that God answered. And then you turned around and God used it for good for others who've gone through that same hurt. 
So we're thankful for you, and we're thankful that you brought that ministry to our hearts and that we were able to encounter and experience God. One person said to me, and it stuck with me, they said, you can see the face of Jesus in each of their little eyes. And I think that it was so beautiful. So thank you, and thank you to all of you that volunteered Friday night. It was a total success. If you didn't get to be a part, I'm just sorry. Your life will forever be challenged by just this big black hole inside of you because you weren't able to be there. But never fear, January 25th is our second respite night, and uh, Through the Roof will be happening uh, on that night, and you need to sign up early so that you can be a part, and man, I'll tell you, it, it changes your life. Angie, did it change your life? She had the sweetest little buddy, Lily, was her little buddy, and that, woman, that little tiny girl controlled the whole night. She was wonderful. She wanted to do my nails, but I was like, no, no. <laughs> but I felt really awesome when she said that I looked 24. <laughs> very, very sweet, precious, amazing. Don't forget, tonight is our Thanksgiving service. Uh, we'll be, Richard and I, Pastor Richard and I are going to be tag teaming uh, in a very short, abbreviated message. We'll have some music and we're, by the young people. The youth are going to be singing tonight, and we love it when they sing. And Richard and I are going to be like Batman and Robin. We're going, to, we're going to have a message, and then we're going to have cider and donuts, which we have done for, I think, over 60 years in this church. And we're using the exact same leftovers from the last 60 years. <laughs> and and the, the apple cider we used, that is now fermented. So <laughs> kidding. All right. We will be having cider and donuts tonight for our fellowship together. And please, please make an effort to come. We don't have midweek service, so we have it tonight so that you can be with your family and friends. So many of you have all kinds of baked goods that you're going to be working on. And, and so we know uh, every time we had a Thanksgiving service, only about 25 to 30 of you came. So we're going to let those that came have the time to be with their family since the rest of you went ahead and chose that anyhow. But we are going to let you be free this week. No midweek service so that you can be with your families at Thanksgiving, and we're glad that you're able to do that. So tonight is our celebration. Tonight we'll be together in our fellowship. It's going to be an awesome, awesome time. Uh, I'll drink your cider if you don't come. We're praying this week for our families, the families of Helen Smith, Ms. Benita and Mark Berger and, and their families, praying for Delbert and Kathy, for Debbie their families, for Brother Willard, who's back there today. They lost Sister Buddy Lee Davis, hero, tiny little lady, but a hero and a giant I mentioned the other day in her memorial and celebration of life. We're praying for these folks, and also in the first service, Donnie and Sean Edmonds was here, and we laid to rest Clarence Edmonds uh, this last week. So we had three families go through uh, the hurt and the pain of, of loss but then we said in the service something that is so beautiful. How can you say you've really lost something if you know right where it is? Amen. And we know that all three of these wonderful children of God yes. are standing in the presence of the Lord in this hour. Amen? Amen. Amen. But we're praying for them. Right now, I, I want to take just a few moments because it's appropriate. The Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. And as we go through the course of a year, we just got done doing big appreciation days and so on the off year we're going to do smaller appreciation days but give you the opportunity to bless just the same and that's that today uh, we're appreciating Richard McIntosh why don't you go ahead and do that right now He got a kiss from Mama. <laughs> Why don't you stand up, Sister Millie? This is Richard's mom, if you didn't know that. She's here today. And now, of course, I want Richard to grab his pretty wife and to both of them stand up just for a moment so you can get a good look at how pretty they look. They look nice today. You know, I want to say this about Richard. It's important that we, like I said, that we show honor. 
He works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He's consistently here. He's here late at night. He's here early mornings. He's always, always working, always serving. And he's not one of them career pastors. He's somebody who you can catch him loading a truck or emptying a box or carrying something from here to there, building something. He's a builder. Man, he's a great builder. It's nothing for me to walk back through the church and and see him in jeans and a t-shirt with a hat turned sideways because he's literally cleaning out something and working hard. As he works and he gives of his time, effort, it's just completely exhaustive at times, I'm sure. He's one of my closest friends. And he is someone who is so selfless. I, I don't know that I've ever met anybody like him. He genuinely doesn't put himself first. He takes effort and, and takes time to make sure that everybody else is okay. He always takes care of me. And I'm so thankful for him and for the role he plays in our church as assistant pastor. It's nothing for you to be, you know, I, like I said, I can see him. He can be outside. He can be loading a truck. He can be doing all kinds of different things. He can preach on Sunday morning and knock the socks off of it. He can do whatever he needs to do. But he's somebody that's just consistently and constantly available. He never says no, if at all possible. The only time he ever even says no is if he's already committed to something else. Uh, the other morning, we needed to trail up to Ohio State, to Columbus, to pray with Brother David Van Hook. And it was going to be a little early. We had to get up at 3.30 in the morning in order to be there. And so I told him, I said, now, Rich, listen, I can take care of this. I'll do this. You, you rest. With, it's your day off. You be with your family. And he just sent me a text saying, I got you. I'll be there. And so he and I loaded up, and we went to Columbus and walked in. And it was when we walked in that I saw that what we do genuinely matters to people. Amen. As David began to cry and Yolanda began to cry, she was in first service this morning. And David is still in Ohio State Hospital, and we need to continue to pray for him. But when we walked out and we were heading to the car, the, the sun was just starting to come up. And I looked at him and I said, you know, this is the stuff that makes being a pastor, makes it fulfilled and satisfying. When you know that you've just been there for someone that just needed you. That's his heart. That's who he is. And I'm thankful for that in him. I'm thankful for his commitment and dedication to our church. Thankful that the Lord called him to be here and a part of us. And so today is our opportunity. You know, a lot about a person, you can find out a lot about them by their children. And Leo was in first service, but he's back in children's church now. But if you haven't met little Leo, um, man, you need to. You need to take a few minutes. This kid is amazing. But the thing is, if you watch him really closely, he acts just like his dad. Chrissy, I'm sure there's a whole lot of you in there as well. But both of you have taught him how to serve, how to volunteer, how to love. He's always so kind. Even when I, I'm, I'm mad Uncle Ray, you know, I'm the, the crazy Uncle Ray. And I'm always trying to put a sucker or a candy bar or something sugary in it. I know, I know, I know, Sister Wilson here upset with me right now I'm always trying to give him sugar candy or put candy bar in it and the other day it wasn't very long ago he said he said I can't have that and I said oh yes you can I said here put it in your pocket you I'm not allowed I can't have too much sugar and I was like I felt convicted <laughs> we have every now and again we have this thing where I took him out and we we did Uncle Ray day and we were having this thing and I took him to a, a toy store and we were in the toy store and I was wanting him to play with the cars and play with all the stuff. We were trying to pick out a toy for him and we walked around the aisle and, and all of a sudden I lost him and I didn't know where he was. And I, I was like, Leo. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm a terrible uncle. You know, I'm like, where is he at? And I went around the corner and I looked at him and I said, what are you doing? He was straightening up all the shelves. <laughs> And I said, Leo, you don't have to do that. They have people paid to do that. And he said, well, they were a mess. They needed to be cleaned up. And I, <laughs> like I said, you learn a lot about a parent by watching their children. Yes, and you all have done a great job with him. He's a tremendous young man. 
And so this week, instead of it being, you know, just today, it's, it's all week. I want you to get on Facebook. I want you to send the pictures of him in a diaper, whatever you got when you babysat him, whatever. You know, anything you got, I want you to post it. I want you to bombard his Facebook and bombard his Instagram with all kinds of love. We love you. We appreciate you. You're awesome. You're amazing. And make sure that, you know, if you can, you take him out to lunch. Fill up his calendar all week long. Make him have to turn and turn you down because he's had lunch four times in one day. You know, let's love on Richard this week. And as you're loving your families and you're taking time to be with your families, don't forget to just drop a note to him and let him know that you love him and that we appreciate him. And now our ushers are coming. And as you do, normally our offering always goes to our missionaries around the world. How many of you know that Richard is a missionary? Not only does he have missions in his heart, but he carries it in all that he does in his role as assistant pastor at our church. So our offering today is going to go to bless and to touch him and his family. So as you do that, I want you to just feel that you, whatever you want to do to bless him, that that's most appropriate. We ask that we not just give an offering, but that we perhaps even meet a need that they have in their lives. Father, we thank you for Richard and for Chrissy and for Leo. Thank you for their families. We ask that you bless, and that you touch them, strengthen them this week. May the appreciation just fill up their soul. And I pray, God, that the love will just cause them to be strong and, and to feel, Lord, like they are just, they can run through a troop and leap over a wall. I pray in the name of Jesus for your continued strength and blessing to be with them. Touch them with the power of your Holy Spirit and bless them with favor. As we honor you and we thank you for them, the gift they are to our church. In Christ's wonderful name we pray, amen.
Amen. Go ahead and stand with me if you would. Turn with your Bibles in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. I want to announce this to you. In our bookstore this month, the pastor's pick is this book. It's called All In by Mark Batterson. You want to check this book out. If you've not read it yet, uh, we did a class on it a couple years ago, and it's a book I discovered and found, and man, it turned me upside down. I had all my staff read it. It's the pastor's pick this month in the bookstore, so go by. See the stewards as they're helping you out, and you get in there, and you're going to pick one of these up. You're going to like it. You're going to come back and thank me. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, and, and also they've got another note here while you're, while you're turning in your Bibles. Um, the angel tree. There are a few more kids and abilities first adults who need sponsored. We've already went over, I think, 35 that have already been taken, and we have a few more left. So go by the Christmas tree in the lobby. Pick off one of those ornaments that's got the name and some details about a family that you can help at Christmas. Uh, we continue to search out and find as many people as we can to help. Thanksgiving baskets are also going out. Your church is busy trying to help people during this very difficult season for some folks. So uh, if you're able to help, thank you for that. All right, Acts chapter 2, verse 38 talk about having church listen to this repent peter said to them and be baptized each of you now you got to remember this the holy ghost has just fallen he has just been introduced to the world jesus said i'm going to go to the father and i'm going to send the comforter the helper he's going to come and he's going to be with you he has been with you he shall be in you oh you're not excited so he, now he's full of the Holy Ghost. He's standing up on a rock, I envision, because he was Peter, Cephas the rock. He said, repent and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that I just got. I mean, you could tell. I mean, he wasn't up there just like, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. No. He was like, you know People got their, they got their church, don't they? People got their church all figured out. For the promise, it's for you and for your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words, he testified and strongly urged them, saying, be saved from this corrupt generation. So those who, amen, <laughs> So those who accepted his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 people were added to them. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Then fear came over everyone, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. How many of you know we are to be living in a day and time when there are supernatural signs and wonders? Sometimes that comes as such a surprise to folks. We no longer, we don't even like going to those churches where there are supernatural things that go on. They get a little too rowdy for me. My goodness. Peter was saying, repent from this corrupt generation. Get away from the mindset here. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And what happened when they were filled with the Holy Spirit? It says, a sound of the rushing mighty wind filled the place where they were gathered and tongues of fire sat upon each of them and they were heard speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. A sign to the unbeliever, a sign, a wonder. God is about showing his glory. He's not hiding. God is not hiding. He wants us to trust him today. If there's any mandate that I've come to this pulpit with this morning, it's that Stratford Heights Church of God, we're in the last hours and days before the coming of the Lord, and we need to understand His empowerment in the child of God. The church must be on fire, as we preached a few weeks ago. Matthew 28 19, He said, these were our instructions. Jesus said, go! Now look at somebody and say, the church must leave the building. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them 
to observe everything I've commanded you and remember I am with you always even to the end of the age how many of you know Jesus by his precious Holy Spirit and the armies of the angels of the Lord are here right now right now I wish somehow we could close our eyes and get a vision, get an understanding, see in the spiritual what's really happening here. I, while we were singing a few minutes ago and the Holy Spirit was moving and someone I believe was being healed in here, I believe if we could have seen with eyes of the Spirit, we could have seen angels, an army of them come in, swooping right down over this left right side over here and touching somebody and ministering to their need. I just am brave enough, courageous enough this morning to believe He is the God of this Word and He's still the same God that he was yesterday as he'll be today and even tomorrow amen <clears throat> all right you can pray with me lord we ask you to move me out the way move me out of the way completely let my words drop in your word come alive in the hearts and lives of your people Lord, I believe with all my heart we've come together for a purpose and a reason. We're not here to waste one another's time. But God, we've come gathered in your name. And there is a mission and a mandate and a purpose for this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Speak to us by your spirit. And everyone agreed and said amen. Amen. You can be seated. All right, I want to I wanna give you a couple of faith builders to start and lay a foundation because we, I just feel like the Lord over the last several weeks, man, we've been preaching about the fire church. We've been preaching about a, a, a sacred heritage. We've been preaching about uh, the Lord has been leading us to, to, to speak about an unshakable kingdom and to live the life, the more abundant life. So God is like doing something. I feel like he is, he is consistently, you know, moving and trying to advance us into this new level. I think he's trying to take us deeper, folks. How many of you are ready to go? How many want to go deeper? Okay, about half of you want to go deeper. Is the other half, what do you want? This, is an, this, this, this book is called All In. I want everybody to be all in today. You know, that means you say amen a lot? Amen. Amen, all right. It, lots of interaction gets early dismissal. Frishes will be shocked when you walk in. But I want to lay a foundation because we need to be reminded of some things. There, there was a hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 that talked about, I think it was there in the New Testament, in order to get us to remember what we need to remember when the storms and the troubles of life come today. In 2018, we've got to remember what he did then because how many of you know if he did it then, he's no respecter of persons, he'll do it now. And so if he's touched anyone ever in the history of the history of all the world, then he can do it now and wants to. Wants to show himself powerful. Moving, trying to find people that will believe him for who he is. And I believe that's going to happen here today. So let's lay a foundation. The first faith builder I want to give to you is this one. Listen to what it says. Everything you see now was made of things never seen before. Have faith for the impossible. Now I'm gonna read that again. It's a faith builder. You can write this down if you want to. You can even quote me on Twitter if you want. By everything you see now, faith builder, everything you see now was made of things never seen before. We talked about this a few minutes ago. Have faith for the impossible. Listen to the scripture that gives us that faith builder. Chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. I love that line. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible, which are seen. Everything that you see right now was made by something unseen. So how hard is it to have faith? When you live and you breathe and you have your being, you're living and walking by faith whether you acknowledge it or not. 
Faith builder, everything you see now was made of things never seen before. Have faith for the impossible. Faith builder number two, your faith will outlive you. Long after you're gone, a memorial of your faith will be a legacy to your family, to your friends, and to the world. Let me read it again. Your faith will outlive you. Long after you're gone, a memorial of your faith will be a legacy to your family, to your friends, and to the world. Here's the scripture. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still speaks. Legacy. Your faith alive forever in the hearts and lives of people you love, people that you don't know. Your faith will live as a legacy. Next faith builder. I first heard this in an emergency room in Chattanooga, Tennessee at Orlanger Medical Hospital where one of the young men that I was with at Lee, we were walking across the street and he was hit by a car right in front of me. And he was knocked several feet, 50 feet down the road and I was there with him and traveled to the hospital and walked into the hospital. He was in a coma, he was in ICU and I stood over his bed. His family was in Florida and there was no way for them to get there. I was the only person who knew him and I stood by the bedside and a nurse walked in, looked at me and she said, sweetie, she said, prayer is the key in the hand of faith that unlocks heaven's storehouse. I've never forgotten it. And that boy ended up coming out of that coma and got completely well in every way. But she said to me, she said, prayer is the key in the hand of faith that unlocks heaven's storehouse. Listen to the scripture. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Oh, did you even hear that? Did you hear that? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Prayer is the key in the hand of faith that unlocks heaven's storehouse. Next faith builder. Godly fear and obedience will cause the world to eat their own words of attack against you. Now that's pretty amazing. That's pretty tough stuff. Listen to that again. Godly fear and obedience will cause the world to have to eat their own words of attack against you. Listen to the word. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark. Boy, they thought he was a jokester. They thought he was crazy, insane, had lost his mind. Prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. They had to eat their own words of attack. His life became a conviction and a condemnation. That's faith. Next faith builder. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are heirs of promise. Look at somebody and say, I'm an heir of promise. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Sometimes our walk by faith is, a, is, is, is you don't know where you're going. You have no idea what's ahead. It's a step of faith. By faith, though, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country. He didn't know, but all he did know was that he was standing in promise. How many of you know, you may not feel it, you may not see it, but you're standing in promise right now. You're standing in your inheritance of promise right now. 
By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Next faith builder. Well, I'm going to read this faith builder last. First, I'm going to read the scripture. Talking about Abraham, for he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. How many of you know God can do anything anywhere? He can make anything happen out of nothing. So here's our big faith builder for this one. I I tried to find a real good one for, for this last faith builder for our foundation today, and here it is. You ready? Anyone, any, every woman here today under the age of 99 years old may find themselves expecting a baby. <laughs> Sila. <laughs> well, maybe not, maybe not. You never know. How many 99-year-old and younger do we have here in the house today? 99 and younger. Yeah. (laughs) The title of our message this morning is the church has left the building. This phrase you've heard me say many times. I'll, I'll say church is not dismissed. Church is just leaving the building. Been saying it for years. And I always love that because it, it came to me one night, and of course, it's never anything new. Apparently, somewhere along the line, I must have heard somebody say it, because now people, I've heard people say it. They, I even think there's a song about it, but I know when I first got it, I thought I made it up. <laughs> but how true. I used to always see that, that this is not the church. You are the church. We are the church. The church is not dismissed. The church, in just a few minutes, will be leaving the building. And we've been preaching over the last several weeks on the mission and vision of our church, embrace God, connect with one another, pursue growth, and serve the world. We've talked in our messages about sacred heritage, being a fire church, an unshakable kingdom, living life to the full. Oh, thank you, Rich. (laughs) Awesome. Y'all didn't tell me, but Richard did. Give it up for Rich. It's, at least it's not commode tissue. <laughs> okay, this service is over. I'm leaving. <laughs> well, glory. Amen. We've been preaching about an unshakable kingdom and a fire church and a sacred heritage and, and, and all these things. We've been talking about living life to the full. God has been doing something. He's taken our church, as I mentioned, to the next level. He's doing something with us. He keeps putting us in these strategic places where we're having to look at what is the church? Who is the church? What is the responsibilities, the accountability? What is the, the assignment, the mandate of the church And as we truly begin to understand this, my desire as I look more and more in God's holy word is that we begin to truly reflect. I don't want to reflect all the other churches. I want to reflect this church. This is the one I want to reflect. And I want to do everything we can to strip ourselves of all of the things, the garbage, the the even traditions and all of the cultural things that tear us away from the true church. Acts chapter 2. Verses 42 through 47, read it. That is the model of the true church of the living God. The true church of the Lord is more important in world history than anything you and I have ever studied in all of our lives. I love the United States, but the United States compares like a speck on the sun in comparison to the living church of God. We belong to an wonderful, universal, cosmic church. We're part of a great, not just us. I don't believe we're the only church. 
I believe we're part of the universal church of God, the living God, the church that is called in Scripture the body of Christ. And that there's a responsibility in the body of Christ that, that we have that we've got to understand and, and we've got to get into those deep places where the Lord is. I, I'm tired of just doing church. I want to be the church everywhere that I go. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 22. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower fades away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word by which the gospel was preached to you. I want to tell you, my confidence and my hope is not in me or you. I love you, but you are not my religion. You are not my confidence and my courage. I don't trust in men or women in this life. I have come to understand there is only one place where I go for my help. I will go beyond those hills and look up for my redemption, my redeemer. He is the Lord of glory. My help comes from the Lord. Lift up your eyes, oh Christian. You belong to a society that will never cease. You belong to a, a God who loves you. Like you, he says that you are the apple of his eye. As I mentioned, you know, we belong to the, I wrote it down, eternal cosmic church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to see ourselves as bigger than we really are. We've got to understand we're part of something, Elaine. When God healed you of cancer, it was because you were part of something. You're part of a greater army, an army of citizens that don't belong to one particular place geographically on this earth. No, our citizenship is in heaven, and we belong to an army of believers that are recognized all over the world from every generation, those that have been long dead and gone whose faith is a memorial before us. God wants us to understand the significance of the church in the vast universe of ours. I'm telling you, I'm praying. You know what I'm praying for? You better hang on. You better hold on to your seat or get a seat belt for you in your pew because I am ready. I'm saying, God, send signs and wonders to Stratford Heights Church of God. Send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. I'm believing for blinded eyes to be open. I'm believing for the lame to walk. I'm believing for cancer, more cancer to be healed. I'm believing for the work of God to be accomplished. You know why? We are the church. Oh, we're the church. I think I said it at the beginning of service. Honey, I don't go to church. I am the church. You are the church. Everywhere you go, you are the church. You have the anointing of the Holy Spirit and God Almighty and an army of angels that are working on your behalf as you may follow the mandate that God has given to you. Oh, rise up, oh Christian. Have faith and believe in God. Let the foundation of your faith arise and stand on the mountaintop and shout it from the rooftop that God is a God of great power and great might and he is able to do anything. Oh, I feel the Spirit of God here today. Hallelujah. I want to discover what is the length and the height and the width, width and the depth of his love. Oh, if we only knew what he knows, if we only had a glimpse inside of our heart today of who God truly is, we wouldn't be sitting on this pew probably right now. You'd be biting at the bit to get out. You'd be wanting to get into that. You know, I'm telling you, we, we sit sometimes in these buildings and we, we, we sometimes relegate our meeting to this is church. We're in church. Oh, I hope we have church tonight. We're in error. We're wrong. 
We are the church. We are the church. If we have church, it's because I'm engaged. If you have church, it's because you're engaged. I can sit there like a lump on a log while they're singing their guts out here on the stage, talking about pray, talking about he's a chain breaker. I can sit there all day long, numb to it all, and I can die on the vine. Somebody can say, well, I didn't get nothing out of that church service. Well, of course you didn't, because you didn't engage yourself. How could you bear, how could you dare to sit in the presence of God and hear words of truth and not let it rise up in you like they said in the Old Testament, like fire that shut up in my bones. I can't be quiet about it. It's a wheel within a wheel. It's work that has caused many, many miracles to take place in the world. And he's not done, not finished. He's not sat down. He is still the God of power, even in, oh! The God of power in this house. Show yourself mighty, oh God. Show yourself powerful, oh Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to his name. We've seen that God always comes through for the church. He always, all down through history. Hebrews chapter 11, they wrote it. They said, man, we've got to remind the people that when you go through the fires of this world, when you go through the trial, when you go through the impossible, faith in God, please God, and you'll see the miracles take place. We've just got to get our faith We've got to get our faith back in position to believe God for who he is. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. All things, say it with faith, say it with fervor, say it with fire. We know that all things work together for the good to those who are the called according to his purpose. All things work together for the good and all things point to the glory of God. The purpose of the church is to reveal himself, reveal himself to this world. Are you sure you know what it means to be the church? Are you sure you know, sir, what it is to be the church? Webster Dictionary don't. I looked up church. It says, a building. A public place of meeting for religious ceremony. And I said, my, 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 that's not the church. Daniel Webster needed to get saved. <laughs> the church is not this building, as beautiful as it is. I've started, if you saw my post this morning, I didn't say, see you in church. I used to say it all the time, but God's changing me. He's taking me deeper. He's taking me into a knowledge and understanding. I said, I'll see you at the church house. I'll see you at the church house. Because all this is is a house. This is like a, a place of meeting. It's just a public place where, yeah, the church comes. But it's not the church until somebody walks in. The moment they unlock the door and they walk in, all of a sudden light comes flowing through the hall. And then another family comes in and another family comes in. Somebody kicks open the, the lights and they begin to play some music. And old Brian, Pastor Brian, comes together with Esperanza. And early at 7 o'clock on Sunday morning, they start to pray. Oh, all of a sudden heaven goes up. The church is open. The church has come open. It's all, it's going now. And they're all there together as the church begins to mobilize itself. It begins to come together for the purpose and the, for the uh, meaning of, of coming in his presence, uniting in his name. Then he says, there I'll be. He then, somebody says, well, you know, I walked in that church and the Lord was there, there to meet me. The Lord comes when we come. He's with us. I don't think he sits in this dark place going, <laughs> I think he's waiting on you and I to engage. Let me tell you something. You need to hear this. You will never experience a miracle. You will never experience relationship with Jesus. You will never know what I'm talking about this morning 
as long as you don't step out in faith and engage in him. You can sit in a Holy Ghost filled service where people are shouting all around you and you will sit there dead as four o'clock in the morning if you don't somewhere along the line say, by faith, I believe. I know you are the, he says, if, you, if a man will believe that he is the son of God and confess that, make a declaration of that, then he will be saved. That's the key in the hand of faith. Prayer, that prayer is the key in the hand of faith that unlocks heaven's storehouse. You want to find out what church is all about? Give your life to the Lord. Open up that, that hard, cold heart of yours and let God come in. We say it in, in other things. Why don't we say it here? I'm at the point where I just want to say it. Go big or go home. He's so offensive. He's just over the top. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Over the top. The church is not the great choir that sings on Sunday. The church is just the praisers. They need to be praising God. They need to come in here ready to praise God. They need to look like they're praising God or get off the stage. Go big or go home. Yeah. Cindy, thank you. I watched you this morning. You didn't even know I was watching you. I was watching you. You were up there and you were like, <laughs> you know, and you, he's a chain. She was breaking the chain. She was all over it. I was watching. I was like, thank you. Thank you. I just don't believe that when the children of Israel were walking around Jericho and they had that last marching order given that they were just like, <laughs> see my new dress? No. I believe they were walking around going, Joshua said to shout. It's time to shout. It's time to play. It's time to worship. It's time to dance. It's time to give glory and honor to God. It's time to act like I'm the church. Woo! It's time to act like I am a child of God. I'm up here. I'm leading. And I'm leading and directing worship to Almighty God. And I've got to do that with all of my might. Have to do it with all of my might. Shut up my yende roboko Hallelujah. 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 Give him glory. Give him glory. Listen, listen. Go big or go home. We've seen that God always comes through. Church is not, it's not our programs. It's not our youth group. These things are wonderful. It's not the respite ministry that we did. That's not the church. Those are the things that God uses the church to do. But we are the church. We are the ambassadors of Christ. We are part of the United Headquarters for Heaven. We are the assembly of the redeemed. We are the company of the saints. We are salt and light. We are a city set on a hill that can't be hid. We are the church, the bride of Christ. We are the church. The world don't know what to do with us. Oh, I've got a whole bunch here on that. They don't understand. They don't understand who we are. I got two minutes, okay? Two minutes. Three, thank you. Can I get four? No. <laughs> they don't understand us. They don't know what to do with us. They call us. They call us all kinds of things, bigots, and we're, we're mean, and we're angry, and we don't like people, and we're all selfish, and we're all racist, and we're all this. Let me tell you something. They, they've got all kinds of ideologies about who the church is. They don't understand us, because we keep popping up everywhere. They don't understand what's going on with us. You know, we, we can go to a jailhouse where there's a convicted murderer, and all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost will get through into that cell, and that young man will lay down in the cell, repent to God, and become a holy ghost filled Christian they don't understand that they can't comprehend a drug dealer who no longer pushes drugs but pushes Jesus on the street they don't understand where the what the church is all about they have no idea that the thief 
the, the adulterer, the liar, the cheater, the gambler, the gang member. These folks can get saved just like you can. And they are the church. They are the church. It's impossible to box up the church. You know why? They keep trying to tell us that we're a denomination. We're not a denomination. That's not the church. But uh -huh, hang on. It's not the non-denomination either. It's not any of those things. It's not an institution. It's none of those things. The church is not an organization. The church is a living organism. It's, an, it's a living thing. Turn to somebody and say, hey, church, how you doing? Well, it gives me an opportunity to take a drink. Oh, no, I have zero. I have no more time. No more time. Stand with me. That'll help me close it down. We're part of the cosmic significance of the major church. If we even understood what God wants to do with us, we were never meant, we were never meant to be just a museum that houses all of our traditions. We were never meant to be a high-priced museum that just shows off. We were never meant to understand that church is in here. The church has got to leave the building. The church has got to leave the building. I wish I had time to share with you this morning. I don't. I'll, I'll save it. I'll, I'll do it next Sunday morning because I have to tell you about where I was last Wednesday night. I was in a church service that has changed my life. You say, why wasn't you at Stratford? I was in Tennessee. I had just got done with my, I'm on the Church of God International Board for chaplaincy and we had just got done with our days of meetings. And I was done. It was about 5 30. Went back to the hotel and thought I was hungry. Called my sister Carolyn, who lives in Chattanooga, about 30 minutes away. I said, Carolyn, what are y'all doing tonight for church? She said, oh, we're having our signs and wonder service. I said, ooh, that sounds awesome. I'll be there. I went down. And my life was changed. When I walked in, the Lord told me, Devana, he told me, you're here on purpose. He spoke that to me. He said, you're here on purpose. And Carolyn walked up to me and she said, uh, you know we're on staff, you have to sit on the front row. I said, no, 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 I'm not sitting on the front row. Bam, there I was. <laughs> sitting on the front row. Pastor Kevin came up to me, glad to have you here, man, it's awesome to see you. I'm like, yeah, thanks, I really wanted to sit in the back. But here I am on the front row. And what began to take place after that, oh, I wish I had time to tell you. Just, we'll put a cliffhanger right here. And I'll share it with you next Sunday. But I will tell you this much. I saw a sign. I saw a wonder that I can't explain. It was something straight from heaven. It was something straight from heaven. And I want you to know that the Lord spoke to me that he was taking us someplace. And the reason that I was there was because he's going to do something in this church for this whole region. That something's going to happen out of this church for this, not just for us, not just a revival, just for this church. Well, it's going to happen here. You better hang on. It's going to happen here. But it's going to be something that people are going to be affected. He sent me all the way to Tennessee, not to be at the board meeting, but to be in that little church over there in Chattanooga off Bailey Avenue. I was there, and I, I, I received from the Lord a sign and a wonder. The Lord spoke to me and gave me two revelations. One was a revelation for my family. It was personal. And another one was for this church where the Lord spoke to me. And he said, I'm going to take you where you've never been before. I'm going to start with you. You're here on purpose. And God's going to do something. Let me tell you, signs and wonders are coming to this house. And when they do, it's going to speak to Cincinnati. It's going to speak to Dayton. It's going to speak to Kentucky. It's going to speak to Michigan. It's going to speak all the way around. Are you ready? Are you ready? I was able to be in that service, and I experienced something that was unreal. There was a, a, a vat of oil there that I'm going to display next Sunday. For right now, you don't need to know the details. I'll just share that with you. And that oil was a sign of God. 
It was oil. I'll just, I, if I tell you all this stuff, I, I feel like I have to keep you till three. No, no, it's all right. I'll share. But I, I have to say this. It was oil that came out of a Bible. Now, you say, oh, our pastor has went off the deep end. Yeah, I did. I dove right in. <laughs> I dove in. You know why? Because they've already had people analyze it, look at it. Everybody's tried to judge it. All kinds of people tried to come in and figure out how they had scammed it, and they can't do it. A year and a half later, it's still filling up tubs of oil. It's oil that is amazing. This oil that is made of 100% minerals uh, from the earth, except for two ingredients. The two ingredients inside this thing, there is no earthly explanation for the oil that's in the two ingredients that's in this oil. And you know what? Cancer has been healed. Autism has been healed. All kinds of people have been healed. There's a revival in the South. They're going crazy. Over a thousand people showed up last Wednesday night in this service wanting to get a hold of just a little bit of that oil. And I brought one in here this morning, anointed little cloth. And I've got one that I'm keeping for our church. And I got one that I gave to someone who needs it this morning. And I'm telling you, I'm believing with all my heart that God, it, how many of you know it's not the oil? It's the sign that it's God Almighty that's showing up in power and might. It's God Almighty. The power of the Holy Ghost is at work. And I'm believing that we are strategically right in the place. It just so happens that the gentleman who has the Bible. I've already told you so much. Oh my goodness. The man who has the Bible connected with me after service. There are a thousand people in that service. And he comes over and is talking to me. I was already down on the floor, had been there for a while, and received two revelations. I got up, and this man comes over to me, and he's got this weird beard, and he's like, mm, and he's talking to me. The next thing I know, he's in tears, I'm in tears, and he's like, where are you from? I said, I'm from up, up north of Cincinnati. He said, you know what? He said, you pray about it, I'm going to pray about it. He said, I'd like to bring my Bible up to Stratford Heights Church. I said, you get that. You bring us a sign. You bring us a sign. Because it ain't the, the Bible. The, the Bible is awesome. It isn't about the oil. Again, understand. How many of you know that? We're going to teach correctly here. It's not about that. But the sign and the wonder tells us that God is on the throne. And he's mighty. And he's powerful. And he's moving on the earth. He's one more time. You know, call it what you want. But I remember when a little lady took care of the prophet Elijah. And she went to her meal. And she picked up and every time she went back her cruise of oil and her meal was there it never ran out let me tell you one year and a half that man has been collecting thousands of vials of this oil and it keeps on it keeps on flowing as I sat there looking at it I marked it at the beginning of the service I marked where the oil was and I got a picture of it in my phone I marked the oil Two and a half hours later, after I picked myself up off the floor, I went back and I looked, and it had risen two and a half inches. And I said, where's the hose? Where's the jar? Nothing. I said, Lord, I don't understand it. I can't explain it, but it's right there in my face. And I receive it. I'm going to tell you what I'm believing that God, and he, that man said, I'm going to come to, I'm going to come up to Cincinnati. We're going to bring this Bible and we'll show those people they can trust in God. We'll show those people that the church, come on now, the church is leaving the building because everywhere you go, don't let nobody box you up into when does church start. You tell them, everywhere I go is church. What time does church start? It starts about 12.30 because that's when we're dismissed and we're heading out to our streets, to our workplace, to our school, wherever we go. That's the church. You are the church. If you're going to go to Kroger's after service, then church is at the Kroger's. If you go to the restaurant right now after church, then that restaurant is going to be a beam of the light of God's love. Walk in that restaurant. You be good to that server. You be good to those cooks. And you let them know you are a child of the Most High and living God. You let God use you to be the church. Can I get an amen? Amen. Father, we come to you this morning. Mm, okay. With every head bowed and every eye closed. 
Somebody in here needs to accept Jesus in your heart. You came in today, you're not right with God. You don't have the right relationship with the Lord. But your heart's beating a thousand miles a minute and you know you need to make things right. You're here in this house right now and you need to pray the prayer to get things right with the Lord. If you're here, lift up your hand real quick. Real quick, who are you? God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Waiting just a moment. Is there someone else? I need to get things right, Pastor. I want to pray today. All right, these that have lifted their hands, we're here for you. God, stop the service just now. Didn't let me end it without us asking him, coming before him, the Holy Spirit doing something in your life, speaking into your life bring you in right relationship we're going to pray right now as we do you pray the prayer the prayer is not it it's like the sign it's not the thing it's from the heart if you pray this prayer from your heart he says you believe in your heart you confess with your mouth then you're saved he already went to the cross he already paid the price you don't have to do that he's already done it so we accept him today help me church let's pray dear lord jesus come into my heart forgive me of my sins be the Lord of my life. I accept you as my Savior. You are the Son of God. You died on the cross. You rose from the dead. You purchased my salvation. Now be Lord of my life. I accept you today. Make me strong. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, Lord, I pray over our church. I pray over our people. I pray as we prepare ourselves and get ready for what you're going to do. I believe, God, you are strategically marking us. To God, our faith is pleasing you. And, Lord, that's what we desire. It's not of us. There's nothing in us. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But the word of God makes us men and women of God. We honor you for the gift of salvation through Jesus. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that makes us strong and powerful. And it's the expression of God in our lives as you conform and make our image, conform us into your image. We honor you today. Prepare your church. Get us ready. Help us, God, I pray. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Read your word this week. Love your family this week. Be the expression of Jesus everywhere you go. And come back tonight for cider and donuts at 6 o'clock. God bless you. Oh, <laughs> Brian, help us. <laughs> Stole his thunder. That's all right. Amen. Let's give him honor and praise for his presence and word today. We are the church. Amen. A couple announcements again, please, this week. We won't be meeting at the church house because we're going to be the church to our friends and family as we're celebrating Thanksgiving with them. And please come back tonight to be with us for our Thanksgiving service. We're going to have a wonderful time and the annual Not Leftover Cider and Donuts. They're fresh this year. Amen. God bless you. The church is dismissed. No, the church is not dismissed. We're just leaving the building. Amen. I got it, Pastor. I got it.